Hi, I'm Mike from 1A Auto. We've been selling auto parts for over 30 years. Hi everyone, Sue here from 1A Auto, and today we have a 2011 Ford Fiesta in the shop, and I'm going to show you how to remove and replace your radiator. If you need this part or any other part for your car, click on the link below and head on over to 1AAuto.com. We're going to remove the air box itself. So I'm going to take off the mass airflow sensor connector, lift that safety tab and push down there and release it. I'm going to take this hose off the vent to the throttle body. And now I'm going to take a flathead screwdriver and I'm going to reach down here and I'm going to take that clamp off the throttle body. There we go. I'm going to take the hose off. Grab the housing itself. And there's, see the rubber bushing right here? There's some below that I just like it. I'm going to end up taking the lid off because the housing just, it's just rubber bushings, but it's kind of rusted in there. So these are a Torx bit head and they're 20 T20. If they're rusted and worn out, like one of them is, I'm going to use the T25. And this one right here is rusted out. So I'm going to for force a two T25 in there. There's four mounting screws to take this lid off. And this is a T25 because it's worn out. Now I can just lift that right up and put that aside. I'll take the air filter out. So now that the lid is off, the air box cover, you can see there's a rubber bushing here and a rubber bushing there, and then this one right here. So you're gonna grab the firm hand and pull it right out of that rubber bushing. Everything's plastic, so you don't wanna break it. There you go. There we go. It's probably been a long time since it's been out. So I'm gonna take this piece off right now. Now you've got this vent hose. Once we get this up, we can see how it's a twist to release pinch these pieces and pull it right off. So now the air box is out of the way. I'm going to take this vent hose, make sure I don't break it because it is plastic. Put that over there, out of the way. Now we can see that we have a sensor right here mounted. And it's just a little pinch and pull. Seems to be the vent for the transmission. I'm going to make sure that is out of the way. Don't forget to put that back on. Now I'm going to take the electrical harness that goes to the fan and I'm going to pop it out of the plastic ears that hold the harness onto the shroud. So with a body style tool, I'm just going to reach in there and pull these clips off. Now we can see there's one more right here. And one right here. Okay. Now I can feel the uh, connector for that fan. You can see it right there. Pull back on this tab and pull out the, on the plug. So now the electrical plug is up and out of the way. And remove it from the follow the release cable for the hood. Up from there. And the same with that harness. Get those out of the way. Now I'm going to get a bucket, place it underneath here. I'm going to raise the vehicle up first and drain the radiator because I'm going to have to remove the upper radiator hose and I don't want coolant to go everywhere. So on this particular model style vehicle, there is no uh, drain plug or petcock for the radiator. So we're just going to take the lower hose off and uh, hope for the best. <laughs> I'm not, not into taking coolant baths. And I think I'm going to 
probably take the clamp off, make sure this moves, which it moves real easy. And I'm now gonna lower it down enough so I can reach underneath and just pull that hose off and into the bucket so I don't get showered on. Now from up above, I can just reach down, grab that hose, and let it drain into the bucket. Now with that coolant draining, I can remove the upper radiator hose, get some pliers, squeeze that clamp back. I'll just wiggle that hose off. And I like to bend it up out of the way. So now all you do is you grab these two tabs that are right here, and you lift these up, push the shroud out. Maybe I can do one side at a time. Then lift this side up. Pull it out from the bottom tabs. I'm gonna have to probably do a little rotation or actually, it comes right out from below. There you go. Bring it, let it come down below. Comes right out. So remove this clip. So you've got the plastic ones that go on the, the actual plastic cover grill, and then you've got these in here. So you're gonna remove this one. and then the same one on the other side. So we move all these clips straight across. So now we have to remove these two covers that go to the radiator bushings. So if you reach your hand back here, you'll find a little plastic, it looks like electrical tab connector, and you push down on it and slide the cover out. So you're gonna push down on this tab and slide it out. Do the same thing to this side. Now you can take this rubber bushing and lift it straight up. One here and one here. Now you're going to take the radiator and slide it towards the engine. If you have an AC unit, you have to disconnect the AC condenser to the radiator. So this system has AC and if yours does, you're going to raise your vehicle up and you're going to look in the bottom here. And this silver thing you see there, that is the AC condenser. So we have to pull these tabs down and push the condenser forward a little bit, or the radiator more this way, so that we can go back on the top and slide the condenser out. I'll show you the uh, actual clips on the new radiator. So right now I'm going to take um, a flathead pry bar or screwdriver, and I'm going to just pull these tabs down like that. At the same time, push that forward. Just pull the tab down, and push this forward. There we go. I just want to make sure that when I get to the top, it doesn't slide itself back, back in. There we go. Okay. So now from up top here, I'm going to pull the radiator towards the engine and you can see the condenser right there, and I'm gonna push down on the condenser and lift up on the radiator. Okay. There we go, there's one side. And we'll get the other side. Ooh, there it is. All right. It's just a little thing. There it is. So now that our radiator is out, make sure you take these rubber spacers off the top, set them aside, and the, the bottom rubber bushings. This one's stuck to the radiator. The other one is inside on the radiator support. And the last thing you have to keep is this little vent. So I'm gonna take a little pocket screwdriver and I'm gonna pull out on this tab on that side. And then this tab and work it back and forth. It's 
get a rubber o-ring in this so it's kind of tight there you go now you can see the rubber o-ring we're gonna have to reuse that and place it on the new radiator here we have our brand new radiator on this side and the one we just took out the original Ford Fiesta radiator uh, they're exactly the same diameter you want to always make sure that the radiators have the same core as far as thickness for cooling. Comes with all the clips that are supposed to be for the shroud. Everything's identical location. It's nice, it comes with a new foam connector. It comes with new rubber spacers for the top. If you need this part or any other part for your car, click on the link below and head on over to 1aauto.com. I'm gonna put the rubber radiator support pushing back into that lower support. Make sure it's flush, sitting nicely. Now I'm gonna put the vent back on. This is actually a little Schrader valve, so to burp the system to get air out, you loosen up the Schrader valve as it's getting warm, and the air bubbles will come out, the steam will come out, and then once you see fluid come out, you tighten it up. So I put a little bit of a paste on there so that that seal would stay nice and uh, moist and not get too dried out. So this has a flat spot to it, and there's the flat spot in there. So you're gonna line that up, feel it snug, and click it in. Now to reinstall, I'm gonna bring it down at a little bit of an angle here. Slide it over as far as I need to. I'm gonna try to line up that condenser. Might get a little difficult because you can't really get your arm in there. So I'm gonna line up the top two plastic ears and slide it over the top of the condenser. I'm gonna put the radiator bracket in on the corner here, a little push pin. Gonna make sure the condenser goes on top of that plastic piece, like that. So I raise the vehicle up so that I can slide the top of the radiator over the condenser on the trim piece. And that way I can slowly guide this into place from down here. Now that we have the radiator in place and the condenser's lined up, I'm gonna put the lower radiator hose on, reclamp it. I like to line up the uh, grooves just where they were so it doesn't leak again. All right, now we can lower the vehicle. All right, so now we're gonna make sure that our top radiator supports are lined up. This has the cable is stuck a little bit behind it. Make sure you get the cable out of there. That rubber bushing down flat, and it just basically falls right into place like it should. Then you have your two half moon bushings that we took out. Slide those into place. Then we have our covers. So we're just gonna slide them, line them up like that, and slide them right into place. So let's take the new shroud, and we went from the bottom up, so let's do it again. So we're gonna take the shroud and put it up at the angle this way, straighten it out. And from here, we can actually see the tabs down below now. And I'm gonna slide it right into the spot. And with the wiring harness right here, it's easier to get to. I'm gonna click, click it right in, line the tabs up, snap it in. Put the harness in the spots. So now the tabs are lined up and you just line them up and click it right in. And that's it. Reconnect your harness all the way up with the body tabs on the wiring loop. Make sure you put it back into this little safety hook. Now we can put our grill tabs back in. There's four of them straight across. 
put this in our push-ins. Now I'm going to put the air box back in, but first I'm going to spray the rubber bushings. Give them a little help with the slipperiness of them. Make sure they slide back in smoother. And bring that right down in there. Now we can line that up. The bushings from down below. That one's lined up. Give it a push down. Snap the air inlet hose connector. So now I'm going to put the transmission vent back on the little tab right here. Push this down. We can put the vent back in the air box tube. Now I'm going to put the upper radiator hose on. Line that clamp up. It's a release style. I got to release it from the. There we go. Okay, everything's in place. Snap this down, looks like it popped out. Now I can put the air filter back in and the air box cover. Make sure it's seated all the way down. Line up the mounting screws. I'm gonna reconnect the mass airflow sensor and then push that red tab down on. Put that vent hose back on. Flat blade screwdriver. And I'm going to tighten the clamp on the throttle body end. Make sure that closes all the way down. The car will not run if there is a vacuum leak on the air hose. Make sure it's tight. Now with the G20. Can tighten down the air box bolts. Last one, it's going to be a T25 because it's worn out. Make sure that's tight. You want no water to get in there. Now we're ready to add coolant. Now we're going to add our coolant. You use only go right all the way through the overflow tank because this doesn't have a radiator cap. This is it. That's where the pressure builds up. So as you fill the overflow, or the actual radiator fill, you're going to take your vent cap and you're going to take the cap completely off. It's at the highest point, so the coolant will go down and push the air out. You can actually feel the air come out. Do that so you'll see coolant come out of here. There you go. You can hear air. Let's see if we get. So now I have a catch bucket underneath there, and I'm going to open this until all the air bubbles stop. I think that might be it. Okay, let's start her up and we'll keep an eye on the temp gauge and make sure the fans come on. So now with the car running, I'm going to let it run for 45 minutes to 50 minutes until the coolant fan comes on. And then make sure I shut it off, let it cool down, and top the fluid off to the proper level. Thanks for watching. Visit us at 1AAuto.com for quality auto parts, fast and free shipping, and the best customer service in the industry.